the U.S. government initiated a supervisory capital assistance program, or SCAP, which involves stress testing all of its major financial, financial institutions. One company that has been helping the banks behind the scenes in order to, to develop the stress testing models and to provide the data that went on to the decision of the U.S. government to earmark 19 of the largest banks as requiring additional capital uh, in a stressed environment was QRM. Together with me today is Charles Richard, one of the founders of QRM. And QRM helps about 250 banks around the world. It has 36 of the top 40 banks in the United States as clients. Charles, tell us a little bit about the work that you've done with the banks. Firstly, when the government initiated the stress test requirement, were you surprised to find that lots of banks didn't have the data that they required in order to be able to build their models? Yeah, I would have to say that um, I was surprised and not surprised, depending on, on some of the organizations. Uh, their readiness for doing a, this type of stress test, one would imagine uh, that they would be pretty well prepared. When you think of an organization looking forward, what are the what are the types of things that they'd be worried about in terms of pro projecting their valuations and their capital going forward. You think it would be a pretty straightforward exercise and that varied dramatically across the you know the framework of the banking industry. What we what we saw um, with working with uh, 15 of the 19 banks uh, in one uh, one manner or another to be universally true was that there was a a lot of lack of coordination amongst the various groups that needed to input factors such as behavioral modeling and stress testing expertise to the process. A lot of organizations had a good, good capabilities of doing a typical asset liability management forecast which focuses on interest rates, but when it came to projecting what their capital would be based on the economy going down, housing prices going down, and unemployment going up, that was a different, that was a different story. Wouldn't you say that, um, that a lot of work had been done on the Basel II front? I know that ma many U.S. banks don't really subscribe to Basel II, but I would have imagined that there would have been enough initiatives uh, at the enterprise level to be able to collect operational data and then benchmark them against scenarios, um, especially economic scenarios. Yeah, Basel II certainly helped. Now, in the past four or five years, there was a lot of effort done by the top U.S. banks and the trickle-down effect of the mid-tier and the smaller banks in terms of complying or being compliant with, with Basel II. But the focus initially was on Pillar 1, and Pillar 1 Basel II essentially required organizations to get information for PDs and LGDs and CCS, for example, to comply with their current position. They needed to calculate the number for the regulator. What is my Basel capital today? And then when they did stress tests around that work, which is essentially a big database project, big database, some assumptions, put the assumptions on the loans, run a very simple equation for, the, for, for a Basel II Pillar 1. That is a much different type of exercise than taking that number, forecasting what your capital adequacy will be going forward based on drivers such as unemployment, GDP, housing prices. Getting the spot number is the first step. Driving it forward in a stress testing example is a totally different step. So a lot of work was done on getting the core assumptions, but not a lot of work was done in preparation for Pillar 2, which is another type of a stress test, like the SCARP is a fort is another type of a stress test on top of that. Just using the word stress test, I mean, that today that's become a very public phrase. The man on the street seems to think he understands what stress testing is. But in the banking industry, we've seen the evolution of stress testing over at least the last 10 years. Give us a sense, your sense of stress testing conceptually, how it's developed over the years and where we are, if, even if the, the, the U.S. government program didn't exist. Sure. There's a distinction. 
the the VAR framework, which was popularized by J.P. Morgan in the you know mid '90s, was an original type of a stress test. Uh, those types of stress tests were based on historical data, coming up with covariance matrices to show how one instrument changes in price relative to a to a particular driver. You would get, for example, a metric that would show with a particular confidence interval, with a based on a particular time frame, what would be the maximum amount of money that you could lose. And that framework is called the VAR framework. It was really popular and it's been used and it's been the one that's been much maligned in the recent, in the recent um, epic. Turner Review uh, came out recently and has a good sort of a critique on what the basic problems with VAR are. Basically, it's based off of historical data. If something didn't happen within that time frame, it's really difficult to predict what will happen outside of the sample set. Right. The recent stress, the recent scenarios, the one in a hundred event started happening every single week. And obviously that type of model um, had some problems. And it wasn't the model itself that had the problems. The model worked exactly as specified. It was the use of that model that was the problem and the judgment around that type of a model. So when we're talking about stress tests, there's another type. I should and the, the Fed SCARP tests are a scenario-based stress test. Apart from a VAR type scenario, um, these are deterministic scenarios that were dreamt up, if you will, by the Fed, or if they were applied at a bank outside of the Fed test, very, very simple sort of a stress test, that, that prescribes certain events in the future in which you're supposed to come up with the reaction to your product types to be able to calculate what will happen in the future. So the scenario-based stress tests are not subject to the same limitations as the VAR-based stress test because they are only limited by your imagination. But the challenge with the forward-looking deterministic stress test is to actually model how it is that you, your balance sheet will change, for example, when unemployment goes up. How will that affect whether a loan prepays or defaults or recovers? That's a much more difficult problem. And that takes some sophisticated M modeling, modeling yeah. capabilities and, some, and a decent understanding of your own individual portfolio and how those drivers affect the valuations of your portfolio. So when asked to do something like that, the, ma the organizations, while they have great pockets of expertise where someone might really understand loss modeling very well, or they might understand prepayment modeling very well. It's difficult to pull all those things together at the top of the house to show the combined effect of the stock market going down, unemployment going up, and housing prices going down. Okay. You can also not accurately calculate that without looking at what would happen to interest rates. Because as part of that, although it wasn't prescribed by the Fed stress test, was an interest rate component, which would drive things like reinvestments, prepayments, and you know, new volume. So I mean, that was pretty particularly difficult. And as part of the stress test, the, there's another piece that was difficult for the organizations to pull together. Typical stress testing is done on current positions and shocking parameters. The stress tests here involve business strategies going forward. How is the business going to evolve to, and how is it going to change under these scenarios? Was that a government requirement? Was the government asking for that? Or was it that the banks wanted to do it in this way? Well. How do you affect your capital position? Right. If you're in a deficit, you sell something, you raise, you raise money by getting investors, or you make income to grow out of it. So implicit within the plan or within the stress test was a need for an organization to come up with some way to grow back their, their balance sheet. Right. So they, they had to come up with some sort of a strategy to earn income, right? To fill in the capital deficit. For the, the reason I asked that question is, I could not imagine state officials um, looking at the business component. Uh, yeah, and, and how a supervisor would really be able to fully understand all the moving parts involved with right. doing the stress test properly, and add on top of that a business plan for working out of that. Uh, it's a fairly it's a fairly difficult task. Uh,